Welcome to Jay Secchio Live. This is Jordan Secchio. We are looking forward right now to the threat from Iran, especially posed by a potential Biden administration. We are realists at the ACLJ. We're attorneys. And when you're realists and when you're attorneys, you know what you prepare for? Worst case scenarios. And we're getting closer and closer to worst case scenarios. Uh, we don't yet know what will happen in the Georgia Senate races, but some of the foreign policy realm uh, is really conducted outside of Congress uh, right. and is focused on that's where the president and the Supreme Court's been clear on that. The Constitution's clear on that. The president has the most power when he's acting in foreign policy. And, and that is why, again, this Iranian threat that is emerging again which was really kept under wraps by yep. the Trump administration, by these new peace deals, by basically what, Isolating what Iran. President Trump was doing through these peace deals was building the coalition to isolate Iran and make it very difficult for Iran. We had Saudis giving, they've given the air rights for Israel to fly over commercial airliners, a whole, and they're doing so publicly. This is not just like private behind the scenes so intel work. So they were building that coalition, but the Biden team could come in and and just totally eviscerate that. Yeah, and I think the reality is they probably will. Now, we've got— Yeah, I mean, uh, they're threatening not to even send the F-35s that were part of the deal. Right. So this is what you've got. So I, I, we've got in our—of course, in our team at the ACLJ, we have depth here. We've got an office in Jerusalem. Skip Ash is in charge of our international law group, retired colonel from the United States Army. Wes Smith, retired colonel— from the uh, United States Army and also a senior military advisor to the ACLJ. I'm going to start with Wes and then go to Skip, and that is the threat from Iran now under an incoming Biden administration. It's gonna, The president isolated them. We had all those peace agreements signed. How's it going to look now? It looks pretty bad. It really does. Uh, Joe Biden has indicated he wants to re-enter the JCPOA, even though it did nothing to stop Iran from acquiring a nuclear weapon. It just delayed it by a decade. Iran continues on their nuclear weapons program, you know, uh, unabated. Uh, they, what is what is going to happen if we don't do something is the most dangerous weapon in the world will be in the hands of the most dangerous country in the mm -hmm. world. Already, they're violating the JCPOA. Uh, the IAEA uh, two weeks ago said that Iran has already uh, enriched 12 times the amount of nuclear material allowed by the JCPOA. They've increased the number of centrifuges, and they've buried them deep underground. They've also continued with their ballistic missile program. Iran is a threat. They are intent on acquiring a nuclear weapon. And, and the only only hope of that not happening is for the world to unite and for the Biden administration yep. not to change what President Trump has done. The most dangerous weapon in the world with the most dangerous country in the world. Skip, how do you see it? I see it exactly the same way. These are the people in Iran are religious supremacists who believe in an apocalyptic vision of how the world should proceed. They believe that they are the chosen people to bring this about. And the Trump administration was very wise in getting out of that agreement, cutting off their funding. So now they're in, uh, in a very bad place economically. It looks like the incoming administration, Mr. Biden administration, is going to reverse that to give them back the money, just like the Obama administration does, to give them the money they need to support terrorism and to support their missile and nuclear program. And that's going to be a disaster, not only for the Middle East, but for the rest of the world. I, I, I mean, listen, we're going to get into this in great length because this is a threat to the United States, Jordan. Absolutely. A uh, huge threat uh, to the U.S., but we've got the team ready to keep you updated and ready to fight because this is critical work that we are going to be doing and engaging all of our international offices as well uh, to fight back against what could be Iran on the move once again. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back to Jay Secchio Live. So we're talking about this idea, which, you know, unfortunately, we probably wouldn't have to be talking about nope. if it wasn't, uh, you know, somewhat likely that it was going to be the Biden administration coming in. And we de definitely have to prepare for it, whether you, you like that or not, uh, to, to really redo what has been such a successful Middle East policy under the Trump administration, peace deals with Israel, um, kind of ignoring this Palestinian issue and saying we can still make peace with the Gulf states, which, by the way, isn't just about Israel and those Gulf states making peace. It's about building a coalition that isolates Iran further. 
And also so that they, if there were the need for a military attack, that they had that this coalition by recognizing and making these peace agreements with Israel, business relations, travel, re- tourism, uh, flights going back and forth now between these countries, that uh, Iran would have a serious coalition that would be fully armed and ready to respond to any kind of Iranian aggression, Espe- even their aggression through the proxies they use, uh, like Hezbollah and other groups. But we are going to have to be ready for yep. for the attempt to dismantle that. Because I will tell you that those Gulf state leaders, they're going to be very weary of now these agreements if they don't get what they were supposed to out of it. Uh, and uh, that, you know, like F-35s ultimately delivered at certain standpoints because they've got advisors on the Biden side saying, well, maybe we shouldn't send those. Exactly. And I want to go, Wes, you wrote a piece that's up on ACLJ.org called The Existential Threat Posed by Iran's Nuclear Program. It, it keys off on the fact that just a couple of weeks back, the top Iranian nuclear scientist, military nuclear scientist, mm-hmm. was killed purportedly by the Israelis. Right, he was. Uh, he was uh, the both the brains and the passion behind their nuclear weapons research and development program. Uh, He was in charge of the Ahmad program, which interestingly enough, that was using the Iranian military for the research and development towards a nuclear bomb. And so that's why he was taken out. Uh, And and going forward, you know, what Iran is saying with the potential Biden administration coming in is that they will not even consider negotiations with the U.S. unless we lift sanctions. Meanwhile, a Biden transition spokesperson has said, well, uh, we would be open to possibly lifting some sanctions. And also, and as a condition for that, Iran, they don't have to go back to where they were before they started violating that flawed Iran nuclear deal. They just need to stop where they are. Don't do any more going forward. Uh, it, it, is, it is crazy. The Gulf states and the other Arab nations, they realize that Iran is a threat to their national security, to, to their existence. That's why they've been so open to, to making peace with Israel. And they are very, very alarmed at a possible change going forward with the new presidential administration. But what Jordan said, and I want to go to Skip Ash, uh, who heads up our international law group, is that there are certain understandings that the these countries had from the United States, wh- what our policies would be, how we would help them, kind of a coalescing of, of relations and arrangements. That could well be out the window now, and how does that impact the situation? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly the threat and the danger here, because we have a situation where the incoming administration looks like it's going to totally reject the successes of the Trump administration just because they do not like the author of those policies. They don't, they're not looking at the success. For decades, the situation in the Middle East was a disaster under both Democratic and Republican administrations. Donald Trump came in and he turned things upside down. He got our embassy moved to Jerusalem, where everybody said that would cause chaos throughout the Middle East. Nothing happened. He has uh, proposed a settlement for the Palestinians. They've done what they normally do. They've missed another opportunity to have a, their own state. But what that has done is that has opened up these other Gulf kingdoms and emirates to consider Israel as a partner, especially in light of the Iranian threat. Remember, Iran is a hegemonic power. They look back that they were once the Persian Empire, and they want to reestablish that as a Shiite Persian Empire throughout the Middle East. And uh, Sunni kingdoms in the Middle East are fearful of that, and rightly so, and therefore they need to have both the United States and the strongest country in it in the Middle East, which is Israel, as allies. By doing that, they can check the threat of Iran throughout the Middle East. But, and I think that is something that if, if this administration gives away, it'll move us back decades. Now, for those of you that are new to the ACLJ, let, let me explain something to you. We've got offices in Jerusalem. We have UN status through our European Center for Law and Justice. We've got, obviously, with Skip and, and, and Wes, we've got military expertise. We have the former director of national intelligence as a senior advisor to the ACLJ on national security issues. So we have depths here. We've argued cases at the International Criminal Court in The Hague. Back this time last year, we were in The Hague. Uh, so we've done this. We're there. We're active in this. But you're looking at a dramatic shift of policy, a policy that has been working very well for the United States for the last four years and culminated, as Jordan said, in these four arrangements. But that is about to be shelved. And that's, you know, unfortunately, that never came out during the campaign. 
No. What was at stake here? Well, I think that, again, it, some of this was the Biden team trying to play it down. And, and honestly, people were so focused on COVID and domestic policies. And there's been such a calmness to our foreign policy, you know, troop withdrawals in Iraq and Afghanistan, the destruction of ISIS and the caliphate there. Um, and any attempt for them to come back was quickly, you know, being put down uh, in places like North Africa. Uh, so, I mean, you had the Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi dead. Uh, you, you had uh, the top Iranian, uh, the head of the Iranian uh, Revolutionary Guard dead uh, by, by American forces. Uh, so we had weakened our, our enemies in the Middle East to a point where um, they were even at re a rebuilding stage. They were being hit with uh, viruses in their, in their nuclear programs. They had no, they were hit with sanctions again. But you see quickly this can reverse. And this is, a, this is a region of the world built on deals. And if these deals that President Trump made aren't made good as they continue on by the Biden administration, we're going to be back to square one again. You wrote, Wes, in your piece, it says, Iran is unrepentant and even now proceeds unabated with its march toward acquiring a nuclear weapon. The threat of a nuclear armed Iran is real and bearing drastic action will take place at some point in the future. Iran's leaders are not rational, and it's deploying even a single nuclear bomb at some point is a very real existential threat to the region, to Israel, and possibly the United States. Yeah, absolutely it is. And more than likely, based on their modus operandi, if Iran acquired a nuclear bomb, uh, they like plausible deniability, uh, to coin a phrase that's been used recently, and uh, they would probably not detonate such a bomb if provoked or not provoked themselves. They would give a smaller version of this kind of weapon to one of their many crazed proxy groups and let that group actually detonate the weapon. And those groups are completely irrational and would probably do it. You look at the situation in Iran and the people on the left, what they're advocating, changing the policies that have been uh, working for the last four years. It reminds me of what happened on, on the nuclear, on um, the Korean Peninsula. We used negotiations and giving them vast amounts of aid, trying to talk North Korea out of acquiring a nuclear weapon. It was an unmitigated disaster. So that today, our only recourse on the Korean Peninsula is to warn Kim Jong Il uh, not to use it and to hope that he does not. Do you really want that same kind of situation in the Middle East? Because if the Iran, yeah, because if course. Iran gets a nuclear weapon, then all options are gone except warning them not to use them, and yep. there is no guarantee that they won't. Yes, yeah, Skip, I was thinking the same thing, and um, the comparisons to Korea is interesting. But the, the fact is that the the powder keg of the Middle East can be drastically reshaped in about a moment's notice. Absolutely, and and we have to understand that. The United States, as a nation, we tend to be very short-term in our view. We're not long-term. When you go over to uh, Europe and you go over to the Middle East, these people remember slights that are centuries old, and they're still holding grudges. So they look long-term, and we look short-term. So we think we can make a deal. We've got a deal, and that's going to last they make a deal. Even within Islam, they can make a deal that's temporary, and when it no longer serves their purposes, they can break it because they have no obligation to be honest in dealing with non-Muslims. And that's a, that's a critical thing that we need to keep in mind as we deal with some of these issues. And the Iranians have already demonstrated irrationality by, yep. by taking our embassy yep. when they're yep. in the Carter administration. Yep. Uh, let's not even think about that again. I mean, that's the kind of things you worry about with this kind of administration coming in. Absolutely. A uh, huge threat uh, to the U.S., but we've got the team ready to keep you updated and ready to fight because this is critical work that we are going to be doing and engaging all of our international offices as well uh, to fight back against what could be Iran on the move once again. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Jay Sekio Live. This is Jordan Sekio. You know what we're talking about, which is Iran, this threat uh, from Iran, which can quickly reemerge. And we were in a situation where Iran was, was still a threat, obviously, with an Ayatollah and this religious-based regime with extreme ideology and proxies like Hezbollah operating. But remember, we, we kind of crushed down on what was going on in Syria 
through the Trump administration. We're building this coalition under the Trump administration, uh, working with Israel and Gulf states. Uh, but if it, two things happen, if the Biden team comes in and doesn't make good on the deals that were made between the Trump administration, those trilateral and, and, and bilateral deals with the Gulf states, um, they're not going to be so so interested in kind of st- well they're not going to be prepared they're not going to have the f-35s to defend themselves and it will be right back to the scenario of the u.s will only move on middle east peace after dealing with the palestinian situation and we're going to go back to giving iran sanction relief as well as going back to a nuclear deal which was a nuclear deal for iran so that iran could stay on a uh, safe path to a nuclear weapon. Yeah, I mean, it was a nuclear deal because it was to give them nuclear weapons. So it wasn't as if this was some great uh, giant surprise here. So, Wes, I was thinking about this. You, you've got a piece up, and I mentioned it earlier in the broadcast, the existential, existential threat posed by Iran's nuclear program. How would you define that existential threat? You know, they, they have made it very, very clear. Uh, they are a sworn enemy of the United States, and they have called for the destruction of Israel. The only thing that has stopped them from destroying Israel is that they don't have the capability to destroy Israel. So, you know, existential means it threatens your existence, and they are an existential threat to Israel. They could be to us because, as I mentioned earlier, you know, they might or might not deploy a nuclear weapon. It is unlikely they would have the capability or the inclination to deploy it in the United States. But there's nothing to stop them from giving a nuclear weapon to a terrorist group, which has no such reservations, no such rationality to do that. Them having a nuclear weapon, the danger of that simply cannot be overstated. One of the things we also needed to look at, because it's, it's, they're not exactly related, but it's interesting, and that is, and you spend time on the Korean Peninsula, And that is the whole issue between uh, the approachment of Korea that the President Trump is engaged in and what a Joe Biden uh, approachment looks like. But before we get to that, I think it's important for people to understand, Jordan, we at the ACLJ have unique experience here and an office in the Middle East. That's right. Right in the heart of really where all these conflicts uh, want to converge, which is Jerusalem. And there we've mostly been defending Israel, you know, at the International Criminal Court and The Hague. But uh, this will this if they go back to this scenario, we'll be also moving back to this scenario, a a situation where Israel's defense and survival will be at stake again. So it won't be just defending them in international courts at the ACLJ. It will be defending the state of Israel's right to exist as a Jewish state. Uh, a, a right to exist, whether or you know, and fight terrorism out of the Gaza Strip, fight terrorism out of the West Bank, and not get pressured into some horrendous deal or themselves become sanctioned. Remember, the final act of the Obama administration was not was was to step back and allow the UN Security Council to condemn Israel, Dad. That was the final act at the UN by the Obama administration. They didn't vote yes, but they could have stopped it because any 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 permanent five member can but, veto it, and they didn't. But that was the final act. So we're going to be right back. Right where we left off. Yep, eight years ago. You had a four-year reprieve from Ridiculous, and you're going to go right back to Ridiculous again. And, they, and Wes, they were very dangerous, the Obama administration, in my view, at the UN. Oh, absolutely. As a matter of fact, they, 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 they teamed up with some of our supposed allies to be an even bigger threat to Middle East peace and to the, to the United States as well as to Israel. And, of course, don't forget, they gave Iran in this whole process billions of billions of dollars, both in cash and releasing you know, their financial assets uh, in the international markets. And so you know, it's really crazy. And here's the thing about this, Jay. Um, our European allies are not helping us on this. President Trump has almost stood alone in some cases. They are the ones who, who two months ago at the United Nations Security Council refused to extend the arms embargo on Iran. They are the ones that the signatories to the JCPOA are still in the JCPOA, according to them, even though Iran is violating it. And that doesn't stop them from saying it's still in effect. And then in addition to that, uh, you know, if you look at what our ir- European allies are doing, they have tried to circumvent the sanctions placed on Iran by the United States. And so uh, it's like there is an epidemic of naivete on the part of the left, 
on the part of the Biden team and on the part of some of our European allies. But Jordan, as you said, we're going to be right back in the quagmire. Yes. And so what we're going to have to do is fight very hard, very aggressively, both in courts and, you know, like the international courts, yeah, when those come up. Israel's right to exist. Uh, the right of the, uni- the United Nations. We, have, we are, again, ACLJ uniquely positioned. We have a consultative status at the United Nations. We are a N- recognized NGO. We could go in there, and we have in the past, on behalf of Israel. We're going to have to do that again. Because this administration, because he's appointing the same people. It's the same people. It's the same John Kerry types. And John Kerry is going to be part of this administration, too. I think he's a climate czar or something. But it's the same ideas that, uh, one— we always have to have consensus. Rick Grinnell's talked a lot about that on this broadcast, how that has been a huge barrier to the U.S. making progress in foreign policy that was knocked down under the Trump administration. It wasn't about consensus. It was about bilateral, unilateral, trilateral deals, and instead instead of multi-consensus of the whole world. And, uh, and also, I think, you know, we now have even, we've added to our team people like Rick, who are the you know, former ambassador to Germany? Germany is one of those countries in in the you know the P five plus one that it always wants to circumvent the the sanctions on Iran because they build the stinking tunnels for their nuclear program. Right. I mean, I, I say that word because it's just kind of ironic that the Germans are the ones building tunnels for Iran's nuclear program, and Iran wants to destroy the, the Jewish state of Israel with a nuclear weapon, and and but they love the money that comes in. And, but Iran has been so isolated that it's been difficult for those countries to get around those sanctions. If if the Biden team comes in and does what we expect them to do, we will be back to it. Will be back to this. I, I wouldn't doubt that there's going to be you know Hezbollah then again gets re-engaged. Uh, there becomes issue more issues in Lebanon, which have been occurring and haven't been getting as much attention as well. It, ro- more rockets that are going to be fired at Israel, and and it's going to just take us back to the same. D- bureaucratic junk state department worthless bureaucrats can't get anything done unless they spend a a, give it a billion dollars so when a christian pastor gets picked up and is uh, being held even by a nato ally like turkey they're 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 not they're not going to worry about joe biden putting sanctions on them they're going to just wonder how how big of a how big of a check can we get from the u.s government uh that's after we pound the table by the way for who knows how many years to get those types of pastors home. And I hope none of them get in that situation. But if they do, we know what it was like under the uh, under the Obama administration. We were successful. But my gosh, it took a whole lot more work, Dad, than to oh, get those pa- pastors begging home. And beating and going, I say beating, beating the table. And congressional going, hearings. Congressional hearings, going on media, and, you know, every resource we had uh, versus the president picking up the phone and getting the person out. Yeah, and no billions of dollars sent. But now they're about they're they're thinking they're going to get a, a, this whole new wave of cash through sanctions relief. That's why what we're about to show you is so important because we could be right back facing the the type of Iran that has cash, money to spend, and a nuclear program back on track. In the last seven years, the Middle East went through an earthquake. Today, the group Hamas declared a day of rage, urging attacks on Israelis. If you step back and look at the picture, you can see the circle enclosing around Israel. This conflict has never been about establishing a Palestinian state. It's always been about the existence of a Jewish state. A Jewish wedding in Israel interrupted by air raid sirens. Human shielding pays today. Why did you put the rocket there next to the school? That's the person that committed a crime against humanity. BDS is a new form of anti-Semitism. The call to boycott the state of Israel, to divest investment from the state of Israel. Graphic new video of violent protests and terror attacks coming out of Israel. That messaging will continue. So we've got to be prepared to be aggressive and fighting it any time it raises. The 
the entire the conception of this is to destroy Israel by turning Israel into an oppressor and using all these different instrumentalities, not just warfare on the battlefield, but lawfare. When they say that Israel should be wiped out, that they mean it? I don't have the luxury not to believe it.